Hey, this is Andrew Brown. In this video, I want to make it really clear the difference between a manage a customer and an inline policy. So what we're going to do is make our way over to IEM. Uh, and I already have a user that I can work with. So you can do this on your regular user, whatever you want to do. I have this junk user I keep trying to get rid of. I thought I got rid of this one in the last video, but I guess not. And there it's gone. Great. So no, it's not. What the heck? Give me a second. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, great. So I'm going to go into AWS examples and, you know, you can make yourself a user if you're not comfortable doing this on your, on your, your regular one. But the idea is that you have policies and if you drop this down, we can add a, a policy here. And mm, if you add user to group, no copy permissions, no attach policy directly. So we're going to go over here and now what we're able to do is attach a policy. Now notice over here in the uh, center, we have AWS managed. Okay, so if you drop this down, you can see one's based on job function. And I find this really useful because uh, these are really good um, base level uh, policies that I think that you can leverage. Um, and you can see there's one for admin, billing, stuff like this. So if you're not sure, you can always give people, like if you have a developer and they need most access, but not everything, you give them power user. If you have someone coming into your account and they only need to have read-only access, you have that. Uh, there's view-only access, which I'm not really familiar with, but we can open it up and take a look here. So it looks like they can view stuff. Not exactly sure what the difference between this one and that one is. But the point is that it, that is managed uh, uh, based on that, but then we have AWS managed over here. So hopefully that is clear. Then you have your customer managed ones. These are ones that I've created. So if you have not created a policy, you will not see any here. Um, so that should be very clear. So let's go over and create ourselves a new policy. It doesn't really matter what it is. I just want to show that we are creating our own customer managed policy. And we'll just choose a service like EC2. We'll give it a moment and we'll just give it all access to EC2. We'll go all the way down the bottom, all the way down to the ground. We'll just say next, next. Oh, this is annoying because it wants us to fill in all this stuff. I just wanted to uh, <laughs> just give me access to everything. What, what, what's the problem here? Let's go over to uh, JSON. Sometimes that makes our life a little bit easier. And so it's a asking for what action. So I'm gonna type in EC2. Sometimes like I don't really like the this wizard because I find that it just makes me makes a lot of extra work for me unless it's really simple stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and type in EC2 uh, colon asterisk. So just say let's allow it to have access to all EC2 instances from everywhere. Okay, and so that should fix our issue here. It says there's still an error. On line seven, uh, this has to be in double quotations or single, I suppose. Uh, same thing with this one, sorry. There we go. We'll go ahead and hit next. Say customer managed policy. We'll create that policy. Let's just zoom out here. And so we have that. So if we go back to our user and we want to go ahead and add permissions and uh, add permissions here. We can go and attach that. I'll just type in customer manage policy, and then we could add that there. Uh, there's a third option, which is adding in a, um, which is adding in an inline policy. So if we create this, this just allows us to write JSON straight straight ahead here. So we can go ahead and type in EC2 colon asterisk, and then down here, we'll go ahead and do that. We'll so this is the exact same thing we wrote before. Um, it's interesting that it's asking us to name it. We'll just say my policy, cause it's supposed to be in line. I'm not trying to create a policy. I'm trying to add a, a policy in line. It is in line. Okay. I was, I just wasn't hundred percent sure because we we're naming it, but you can see we have an ABUS managed one, a customer managed one and a, uh, customer in line. And so the idea is this one's only applied to me. This one can be shared with other users. This one is managed by AWS. So hopefully that is really clear. I'm going to go ahead and just clean this up really quickly. And I wanna go here and just uh, remove that one as well. Um, actually, what we should probably do is just do a little bit of um, cloud formation because I think that is also a really great thing to uh, learn as we're working with um, policies. So what I'm gonna do is make my way over to the AWS examples. And I'm gonna go, uh, yeah, I removed all that stuff, so that's good. But I'm gonna go back to our uh, policies here. I'm gonna look for that cust customer one. I, I wanna go ahead and delete it. Okay, so say customer managed policy, good. And so here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna just hit period. I'm not gonna use um, code spaces or, or get pod uh, today because I don't feel like generating an access key uh, for this. But what we'll do is we'll go over here 
Did I change something from last time? Why is it showing me uh, <laughs> that? Uh, no reason, just a number one. But what we'll do is we'll make a, a new folder here and we'll call it I am. And I'm going to go ahead and just make a CloudFormation template. And we'll just type here uh, types of types of policies. Okay, I'll bring that in. And so what I want to accomplish with this is I want to write a CloudFormation template that is going to have all three of those attached to that specific user. In fact, we could even generate a user here if we want to. So we're going to go ahead and type in AWS uh, CFN user. Okay, and we'll go here. Give it a moment. We'll go down to um, properties or return values. I'm actually just looking for an example. Norm normally they show that at the bottom. They don't, it's right here. And we'll go ahead and just copy this. We'll just say parameter, or sorry, resources. And just follow along the best you can. This is uh, YAML, so it should be two space, two spaces here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this link at the top. And I always like to um, put the link to this actual resource so I can hold control or, yeah, control, and click through to it later on when I need documentation. Uh, my user here, of course, we could be using um, ChatGPT or other tools to write this out, but it's so simple that you should really just write it out here and half the time those things mess up a lot. Uh, so you can see we can apply groups, um, but what I'm interested in is uh, just setting up the base user and giving it some permissions. So we'll go ahead and, and provide a username. So we'll go here and say username. I'm gonna call this uh, user, uh, my cool user. And right away we can actually attach uh, a managed policy yarn to uh, to this user, so we can go here. And it looks like a list of ARNs for IAM policies. So we can do this, but like it's easier just to go to the next line and do um, a hyphen to have a managed policy. So let's go ahead and grab one. Um, so I'm gonna go here and just pick a job function one. Give us a refresh here, just clear that out. I'm gonna choose uh, view only access because that sounds really uh, restrictive. So I like that one. And it just it said to paste in the orange, so I'll just do that. So that should add that uh, managed one there. The next would be to add a custom policy. So what we can do, go down here, contains information about an attached policy. So we go here and yeah, so we can attach policies here, okay. Policies. And sometimes you have to click into these to figure out what it is. So we go here and it wants um, adjacent structure of this. So we'll put a, I think it's an array of JSON objects. So if we do that, and then we say policy document, okay, and then we say policy name. My cool policy. And it's asking for JSON. Does that mean that we can just provide the JSON as a policy. Yeah, so this looks kind of like an inline policy. I'd be really interested in seeing what happens there. But here's an example, and I'd actually rather grab the YAML version because YAML turns into JSON if uh, you know much about YAML. And so we'll go ahead and just paste that in. All right, and uh, we need that. Mm, do we? No, we don't actually need it there. There we go, that makes more sense. Because otherwise that'd make this, an, this the, the first array item, the second one, so that we want this to be the same object. Um, and this is listing users, which is totally fine. I, I think I'll stick with that. Uh, so the question is, is that, that going to be inline? Let's go take a look. Attach a, uh, an attached policy is a managed policy that can be attached to a user. So it makes me think that it's going to create an attached policy, which is fine. I kind of want to do an inline policy. Let's go back to the user there for a moment. Well, while we're there, I'm going to open up this one for a moment. And I'll click back here. We'll click back. I just want to see if there's any other options here. So we have policies, manage policies, looks fine. We'll go to IAM policy here. Adds or updates an inline policy document that is embedded to a group user or role. That sounds really good to me. So go down below here. I'm going to go to examples. I'm looking for an inline one. And I'm going to call this In my inline policy. 
I'm going to go ahead and just grab this uh, URL up here to save myself some trouble. And actually, normally, normally I put this like right above the type. That's where I actually like to put it. And so we'll go down here. And we have kind of an example of one. This says user. Oh, no, no, no. We want to be over here. Okay, that makes sense. And we'll go ahead and copy this. Okay, we'll paste it in. So let's see what we have. We have the type as I am policy, the policy name, my inline policy. This is allowing from everywhere, which is a bit crazy. We're just going to say from everywhere for uh, EC2. And here it's attaching roles, but we want to attach this directly to a user. So if we go back up to the syntax, there probably is something for this here. Users, exactly. And it wants the name of the user. Doesn't say R, it says name of the user. So we'll go here and just say uh, users. And we can probably reference this one. So I'm gonna click, I'm, I hold control and click so I can get back to that reference. And we'll go down to return values. And this says, when you pass the ref, it returns the username. That's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna type in um, exclamation, R-E-F. And then we're gonna put in my user. And so that should return it. And so I'm hoping that we have a manage policy, uh, a custom policy, I, again, I don't know what this one is, and an inline policy. Um, and we could go a little bit further because I think we should, and we should just uh, make a new role and then attach the role um, to the policy and then attach the policy to the user. So if we go back to users, we could probably attach roles. Uh, oh, no, we can't, sorry. Roles are for services, right? So we can't, that makes sense. But my, my one thought was that it'd be nice for us to create a policy uh, separately, but will this be an inline policy? That's what I really wanna know. Um, how do we know if it's inline or not? So let's go back over to, what, well, what's this? Adds or updates an inline policy document that is embedded into a specific user. I mean, this sounds more like it'd be uh, uh, that than the other one. Let's go back to policy here for a second. Adds or updates an inline policy document. Uh, okay, so this one says it's inline as well. Um, and then what does this one do? Uh, let's go down and take a look here. So we have policy document, policy name, username. All right, let's just copy this one. Okay. We'll just say here, my second inline policy. Grab this one here. Whoops. Uh, say my second inline policy. For this one, I'm gonna give it access to S3. All right, uh, and here we're specifying the username again. Say ref my username. My user, it looks pretty much the same as that one. So, so why? <laughs> That's what I'd like to know. Why do we have one that's so darn similar? I can't really tell the difference. All right, well, whatever. We'll just go ahead and create it. So we have our, uh, our document here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it, or sorry, just download it. So we'll say download. And I'm going to uh, find that in my downloads. Just give me a moment here. And what I'm gonna do is make my way over to CloudFormation. So we'll type in CFN. And you know, for CloudFormation, we do it all different ways. Sometimes I do it uh, uh, this way by directly uploading. Other, other times it's just all over the place. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new stack. We're gonna create the new resources. I'm going to upload a template file. I'm going to, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm going to drag over this template file. You can't see it, but I'm dragging this off screen from my, my Windows folder. And we'll go ahead and hit next. Um, it says there's an error on line 22. Would have been nice to know that ahead of time. So we go down to line 22. It's because I'm missing the comment there in the front. I'm gonna delete the file uh, out of my downloads. I'm gonna download this one here. I'm gonna go back over to CloudFormation. I'm gonna try and drag this over again. There we go, we'll hit next. Uh, my policies for user. We'll go ahead and next. We'll go all the way down to the bottom. 
Sure, we'll hit next. We'll go all the way to the bottom. We'll say I acknowledge and create an IAM resource so that it has IAM capabilities. We're gonna wait for this to create and see if it's successful, okay? All right, so we have some failure here. We'll go over to our events. We'll re refresh this here. It says validated, failed for the following uh, resources, rollback requested by user, properties validation failed for resource my user with name, extraneous key username is not permitted. So it sounds like we might have introduced a tiny mistake here. Not really sure where. <laughs> As Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what its problem is here. Let's go back and take a look again. Extraneous key username is not permitted. Property validations failed for resource. My user with message extraneous key username is not permitted. So it's suggesting that I provided the wrong parameter. Let's go back to I am user here and take another look. Maybe I did write it wrong. Username. The name of the user to create, do not include the path to this value. The regex pattern, a string of characters consisting of an upper lowercase characters with no spaces. You can also include hyphens. If you do not specify name, it was cloud formation will generate a unique physical ID. Well, how about we just remove this out of the equation, okay? And let it auto generate its own name and then maybe it'll have less of a problem. But what the problem is, I'm not 100% sure about. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that template. We'll go back over to here. We'll delete our stack. And uh, this should be pretty darn quick because it didn't do much. And I I have to download this template again. Make sure it's saved before you download it. We'll download it again. We'll go back over to CloudFormation. And yeah, probably would've been faster if I just configured this so we could deploy it but uh, with a CLI, but whatever. Learn from your mistakes. Okay, so say my cool user, next all the way down the bottom, next, all the way down the bottom, I acknowledge, submit. I'll see you back here in just a moment, okay? All right, so that has created. Let's go take a look at the resources. And so we have an inline policy here, a secondary policy, which is uh, type I am user. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and the I am user itself, let's click through to the user and actually take a look and observe what permissions are attached. So we have customer inline, customer inline, customer inline, manage. So I wasn't able to, uh, other than this one, I was able to get a customer managed one attached. There's probably some way to do it, but it's not that important. But I wanted us to get some practice with uh, CloudFormation with IAM policies. And I, I really just wanted to show you that you can do them in line like this, which is really nice. But I would say that we are uh, done here. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and just delete the stack. And I will see you in the next one. Ciao.